I went through all the purchases that I made in the last three years and narrowed down this list of items that are basically my worst purchases. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and this was a requested video. I was asked to share a list of items that I've sold from Hermes. That was during my recent Q&A and I was like, hmm, there aren't that many because Surprisingly, even though there are some failed items, luckily a lot of them I actually love and use quite a bit and are best purchases. I'll link that video up here. But some of them I did change my mind on and I'll just do this just as a review and as a update to the items that I changed my mind on and why. So let's start off with items that I have sold so I can't really show you, but I'll put a picture up. And there's only four items that I've sold. One of the first things that I sold was a pair of shoes. They are the easy sandals. So they are the platform sandals with a cork bottom. And those were new when I bought them. They didn't come in half size. So I took a 37 and 37 is a little tight. 38 is too big. And so the sizing was a little off and therefore I didn't feel like I could walk comfortably. Again, the platform is quite high as well, so yeah, I didn't want to risk it. The cutout area can sort of feel very abrasive on the skin, and personally, I just didn't want to fall in some sort of platform sandals since the size wasn't perfect. Therefore, I sold them to Fashion File. Generally speaking, it's not that I wouldn't recommend that pair of shoe necessarily. It just really depends on you. I think if you're comfortable work walking in higher shoes and if you're comfortable with shoes that doesn't have any sort of sandal or ankle straps then you should be fine uh, and also if the size works because as far as i remember there was no half size when i started buying them another pair of shoes that i sold and that's more recently it's a pair of sheep sandals but the teddy version you guys all know that i love my sheep sandals i had a total of five pairs and I made a dedicated video reviewing uh, the sandals so I definitely will link it up here for you to watch. I generally like this sandal. I will say I do have my preference in terms of the material so you can watch that video just to see a comprehensive review. Generally speaking, I favor the suede version and then this regular version. And then the Teddy version is my least favorite, which is why I sold those. Were they uncomfortable? Did they scratch me? No. But were they that great? I didn't think so because honestly speaking, the reason why I wear sandals is because it's hot out there and it's the summertime. But the fact that these Teddy versions are made of beautiful lambs shearling, I didn't know in which season to wear them. In the fall, they were still too hot. Like it made me so hot. And in the winter, it's way too cold because then your toes are exposed. And I'm not one of those that wear socks with sandals. So yeah, they were a weird style, a weird material. And so I just don't think that shearling belongs to sandals. I don't think fur belongs to sandals. That's just me. I know a lot of you can pull it off, but for me, they were really weird, not functional at all. So the third item that I sold, I've never actually revealed it on my channel, is a costume jewelry piece, so a fashion jewelry piece from Hermes. I originally bought it as a gift, so it is the Pop H necklace. I bought it in the color white with a small motif and it's really really cute. I never revealed it because obviously it's a gift so I'm not gonna reveal every gift that I buy to other people but the reason why I ended up selling it is because I found an even better gift for my friend and so in the end I didn't need it. That was the only time, the one and only time that I ever bought fashion jewelry. Actually I lied, I'm wearing something that I'm gonna talk about later. Um, but it was one of the only times that I bought fashion jewelry from Hermes and I don't really buy their fashion jewelry very much uh, just because I do prefer their fine jewelry and we'll get into the, this piece later. One more item that I sold and that's the last item that I sold and it is a hat. There was a while that I went a little bit cray cray with buying hats, not just Hermes but also Chanel. 
Uh, I think I bought some from Balenciaga a while ago. And so I bought so many hats in a short amount of time that I told myself to stop buying them because I, I can't even wear all of them. So obviously I still have these because they're pretty classic. These are just like the, you know, the typical baseball cap type of hat. But yeah, these are just really um, sort of like your baseball hat type of shape. I have way too many bucket hats, baseball caps, beanies, just from all the different brands. And I don't even always wear them, not because they're not great. It's just that I get too lazy to grab them sometimes. But the reason why I sold that one uh, that I'm going to tell you is called the Danny cap is because that one, for some reason, even though I buy my hats in all the same size, I buy them in size small or size 56. That one in particular was a bit too tight. They still fit me, obviously, but they were a little tighter than the other ones that I have from Hermes. So that's the reason why I sold them because that one I literally never wear. Probably the first time that I bought it, I wore it once and I never wore it ever again. Uh, so I just sold it on my Instagram and a lovely subby from Seattle bought it and she loves it. It looks so good on her. As far as all the items that I've sold, that's it. Not very many. And honestly, I, I don't love selling, not because it's annoying to sell, but also because I lose a lot of money on the items that I sell. So as long as I can still find a use for it, I'll keep it. And also, luckily, I haven't had too many mistakes with Hermes purchases because the pre-spend and this whole journey is so expensive that I you know, I'd rather be sure when I like something before I buy it. But sometimes it doesn't work out, right? Okay, I want to talk about two more pairs of shoes or two more styles of shoes before we move on to some show and tell that uh, are part of my worst purchases or that I change my mind on. The first pair of shoes that uh, I don't have, I can't show you, but I can show you a picture are these really cute boots. They're called the Fuji boots. So with these boots, I actually tried them in store and I loved them immediately. It wasn't my size, but when I came home, I started noticing that uh, it was very uncomfortable. Um, I can't quite remember exactly, but I think my heel was getting scratched and I think there was something about the structure of the boots that was not very flexible so i felt like i was like literally walking like a plank uh and yeah they just didn't work out and obviously they were brand new so i brought them back that was the only time one of the only times that i brought back anything for an, an exchange so i just got credit back to buy something else and yeah those boots did not work out they were a brand new style i remember it was also very narrow like the footbed inside the boot was very narrow and even though I already sized up, it, it was just very awkward. I can't imagine anybody finding them comfortable, that's just how I feel, but I also don't know if they're gonna keep making them. I don't know if it's gonna be a classic. Another pair of shoes that I never ever bought, but I'm gonna mention it here because I tried so many, many different times. Oran sandals and Oasis sandals. So basically they look like this, the front, but just without um, the back part here, no, no ankle part. So the Oasis are the heel version and the Oran sandals are the flat version. I feel like you either can wear them or you cannot wear them. I'm one of those people that can never make them work. I always love the idea of owning them because they look so classic and carefree and easy to put on, but they never worked for me. And therefore, for so many, many years, I was never able to buy a pair until they made this version with the ankle strap. Uh, which are these are called ensemble, so they're a different name. Anyway, I just thought I would mention it here because perhaps for some of you it will also not work. And if you did buy them, they could become your worst purchases. So I'm just telling you all make sure that they are gonna work for you because it's not just a matter of sizing, it's a matter of fit. Okay, I promised that I would talk about this bracelet. Like I said, I've only really bought their fashion jewelry twice and this was one of my 
first purchases at Hermes. Not the actual first purchase, but it's it's one of the first purchases that I've ever made. I hardly reach for it, so I think for that reason, it's one of my worst purchases. Is it the end of the world? No, I only have one fashion jewelry from Hermes. Maybe it's too cool for me. It's just not the look that I go for. I'd rather just save the the money and buy more scarves or buy more ready to wear so that's where I'm coming from in terms of like worse purchases it doesn't mean that this item is no good but I definitely don't make a ton use out of this since I mentioned scarves <laughs> as you all know I love my silk scarf the 90 centimeter silk scarf I recently also bought some twillies which I am also experimenting but speaking of scarves the one scarf that I don't wear or hardly, hardly ever wear, and it's also one of my first purchases from Hermes, is their 140 centimeter shawl. I know some people are kind of the reverse of me. Some of you do not prefer the 90 centimeter but prefer the shawl version. Their shawl is more of a cashmere material. So it's very nice, it's very soft, it's a very big scarf and this is it, this is one of the more iconic classic print as well. It's called the... this one is called the Three Graces, so I totally forgot. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very beautiful material as you can see and super beautiful print. The Three Graces has like three giraffes on it and a lot of people love this size. I just find it too big. Like, it's so big and it's so warm that um, I never wear it. <laughs> Again, it's a beautiful scarf. Like, just, just picture this with a, you know, beautiful drapey black coat. It, it, it totally works. Um, but for some reason, this size of scarf I don't really wear. I think it's kind of similar to how I feel about the hats um, even though with hats I still maybe reach for them a bit more than this. With the hats I sometimes just get too lazy to grab them if it's not cold enough or if I can get away with just getting in and out of my car. The 90 centimeter for me is different not because they're better I just find that the 90 centimeter is more collectible. I obviously, at this point, I buy so many of them that I can't even wear them often enough, um, even if I rotate them. So at this point, I am more of a collector of the 90 centimeter scarf, but I also enjoy wearing them as a top in the summer, and I love doing that, especially when I'm on vacation. So I kind of get more use out of them, and I also do enjoy wearing them as an accessory in the winter to warm up my neck. Uh, they are a little bit less bulky than the shawl, so I actually prefer. But you and I know that ready to wear is a category that the essays love us buying into because it's a lot of brownie points when you buy ready to wear for them they love it when you buy ready to wear and it helps with your building of your profile so you know it helps that I also love the pieces that I buy however it hasn't always worked out and I have shared those in a past video I'm sure but I'll just mention it again since this is sort of like a summary um, these pair of pants, I still haven't worn it since the last time I talked about it. So this is a knitted cashmere wool pants, elasticated, high-waisted, and slightly cropped. And they are kind of cute, actually. It's really more loungy more than anything, but they're kind of cute. The cutting is very cute, and it's a great material. They do wool so well and cashmere so well at Hermes, but I never wear because I don't wear knitted pants, generally speaking. And the only reason why I bought it, at least at the time, and that is a mistake, is because my essay was suggesting it. I always give everything a chance, so when I tried it on, I liked it on me. I actually did like it on me because the cutting, the fit, and everything was great. But I didn't realize, I, at least 
before I purchase them um, that I am not someone who wears knitted pants. I'm just not that kind of person because they are definitely more loungy of a vibe and I'm not someone who wears loungy clothing, if that makes sense. Um, they're not athleisure enough. I do wear athleisure. It just goes to show that you really, really need to be picky and you really, really need to know yourself so well that you don't get influenced by suggestions because um, that was one of the mistakes that I made. I was influenced because apparently it would look cute on me, which it was, but um, it's not my style really. So yeah, unfortunately, it's a lot of money spent that just sitting there. So that I should really sell, I think. But at the same time, it's sort of hard to sell clothes that are so generic. In a similar vein, I've talked about this jacket. So this is part of the equestrian line. So it's not quite the mainstream ready to wear. Even the color I like, there's nothing wrong with it. But um, yeah, I never wear it. I, ha I still haven't worn it since the last time I spoke about it, which you know, I did say that I would make an effort to try to incorporate it, but I just couldn't. And I probably still can't going forward. I don't know when I will actually wear it. And so anyway, the lesson here, which I will repeat for you guys, is to not get influenced by other people's opinions because you can always justify it, right? Like for this jacket, for example, it's a nice, really nice soft fleece it can be your you know your jacket to warm up in your exercise or it could just be a layering jacket when it's really cold in the winter or just like a wind jacket in a transitional weather like you could justify it all the time and also the price was not that bad right like pricing at Hermes in terms of ready to wear at least in the past was not that bad uh, it definitely has gone up a lot lately but you can always justify it and it always will make sense but if you know it's not your style then try not to get persuaded i think that's the problem i had at least in the beginning of my journey i was easily influenced if my essay said that it looked cute on me and i agreed at least in the moment i agreed then I'll just buy it. Of course, certain things did work out in the end and even became some of my best purchases, but others didn't. And you really just have to know yourself very, very well. Don't be afraid to say no, because at the end of the day, they are very, very expensive things sitting there not being worn. I think for a lot of my makeup items that I buy from Hermes, I have some first impression try on videos that I've made. In terms of the performance and the quality of their products, it's still excellent. So my first impression is still valid from a sense of the quality control and the quality performance. But personally, the reason why I changed my mind on some of their makeup items, so let's just go one by one, uh, especially the one that I have definitely made more of a 180 type of decision is their plein air natural enhancing complexion balm so this is their um you know you can call it cc cream it has spf it's still basically full because although my first impression was good and i even had samples before that i even tried it in the store they had applied it on me so i tried it a few times before i bought it but for some reason once i bought the full size um i don't know if it's a different batch or if it's just if it's always been like that but it's just the fact that i am wearing it more often uh like several days in a row that made me very sick um, that just made me very uncomfortable because I'm very, very sensitive to scents, especially fragrances, strong fragrances. Now, it depends on the fragrance and how strong it is. I will say for me, this is strong enough fragrance that I am, um, I, I don't like it. I, I, plain and simple, I, I don't know how else to say it. The amount really made the difference. I think the moment you applied it a little bit more, because it does have SPF, so I kind of like the two-in-one, uh, then the fragrance really started getting to me. So 
I feel like I had to really apply a thin layer and also not use it every day to be able to use it up. But as of right now, I don't know how I don't know how I'll use it up because it will take forever because I don't love it. I don't love the fragrance, but otherwise the product is great. The product actually is so nice on the skin, but just the scent, I cannot stand it. And it's not the shade or anything, nothing wrong with the shade. Uh, by the way, I do have this shade, number 20. Whereas for these two products, I don't think they're the best, but they're not the worst either. So I will still continue to use them until it's over. Uh, but I probably would not repurchase as well. So with this one, this is their bronzer powder. And this one, again, even the scent, I can smell it quite a bit. Um, the color number two atlas with their bronzers i actually really like the fine powder and i think it is a very nice consistency and everything it does feel good on the skin but their color range is very strange i feel like number two is too too orange on me and i am not even sure if number one would have worked either i just feel like their shade range is very limited so i feel like there are better bronzers or better powders out there especially those that don't have such a strong perfume as well so it's definitely not my favorite but i will use it same with the lip balms so i love 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 their lipsticks i am wearing their lipsticks right now they are a bit more drying but i love the shades of lipsticks that they have so i am okay with their lipsticks um, but with their lip balm, you would expect a lip balm to be hydrating. If you were to wear this alone, it's not going to be enough. So I feel like I need to hydrate with a different hydrating lip balm before wearing this, which defeats the purpose. I hope you found it helpful. I'll link a couple of videos that are related to this topic as well. And stay tuned for this weekend on Friday. I'm going to have a very special unboxing and you're not going to want to miss it. Bye!